Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christie Reisinger, and today we're going to discuss the data surrounding myocarditis and the COVID-19 vaccine. So the question that most are asking is, does the COVID-19 vaccine cause myocarditis? And the best answer for that right now is possibly, but it seems to be rare. This is what we know. The COVID-19 vaccines that seem to be related to the myocarditis are the mRNA vaccines, meaning the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines. This reaction has not been seen with the one-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Most cases occur after the second shot of the mRNA vaccine and are seen in young men between the ages of 16 and 19. It occurs within four days of the vaccine and the typical symptoms include chest pain, shortness of breath, and heart palpitations. We've gotten a lot of good data from Israel on this because they vaccinated 55% of their population aged 16 and over and have a universal health system that's relatively small and can be evaluated. Israel recently announced the results of their expert panel investigation into this issue and announced on June 1st a possible association between Pfizer's vaccine and heart inflammation among men aged 16 to 30, but especially among young men aged 16 to 19. In Israel, there were 275 reported cases of myocarditis from December 2020 to May 2021, 148 of which occurred around the time of vaccination. 27 cases occurred after the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine, while 121 cases occurred within 30 days of receiving the second dose. This is compared to a total of 5.4 million vaccinated people in Israel. They concluded that between 1 and 5,000 men ages 16 to 24 who received the vaccine developed the rare condition. But of note, as I mentioned earlier, Israel has only vaccinated young adults aged 16 and older, so we don't have good data from them on younger children. And Israel did not use the Moderna mRNA vaccine either, only the Pfizer vaccine. But of note, their health ministry has just approved moving forward with the Pfizer vaccination for children ages 12 to 15 in Israel, but they have left it optional for parents to decide if they want to do it or not. So what have we seen in the United States? Well, last month, Connecticut's health commissioner said that there were at least 18 teens and young adults in the state who developed heart problems following the mRNA of COVID-19 vaccine. In Washington State, public health is investigating 12 reported cases of myocarditis or pericarditis since early May among King County residents following the first or second dose of the COVID-19 vaccine with either Pfizer or Moderna vaccines. Their cases range in age from 16 to 66 years, but 11 of the cases were under 40 years of age, and the majority of cases were among males. At least three patients were hospitalized, but no ICU admissions or deaths have been identified. Well, why do scientists think this is happening? They're not really sure at this point, but one possibility is that the very high antibody levels that are generated in young people may also, in rare cases, lead to a sort of immune overreaction that inflames the heart. Younger people have a stronger immune response to vaccinations, and as a result, they have a higher antibody level following immunization, meaning their immune systems are working harder. And viruses are the most common cause of myocarditis. The inflammation is a product of the immune system trying to fight off the infection. And since vaccines prime the immune system too, it is possible that a COVID-19 vaccine might trigger the heart problem in some kids. And specifically, the smallpox vaccine has also been associated with rare cases of myocarditis in the past, especially in younger men. Furthermore, COVID-19 itself sometimes causes myocarditis. The May issue of JAMA Cardiology studied 1,600 college athletes who had a SARS-CoV-2 infection. 37 were found to have signs of myocarditis, but only five of these would have been detected based on symptoms alone. So what exactly is myocarditis? Myocarditis is inflammation of the heart muscle, known as the myocardium. This muscle is responsible for pumping blood in and out of the heart to the rest of the body. In many cases, the exact cause of myocarditis is not found. When the cause of myocarditis is found, it's usually an infection, 
that's made its way into the heart muscle, such as a viral infection, which is the most common, or a bacterial, parasitic, or fungal infection. Some autoimmune diseases like lupus and rheumatoid arthritis can also cause myocarditis. Well, what should we be on the lookout for? Symptoms of myocarditis include chest pain, which may get worse when you're lying down, faster or irregular heartbeats, shortness of breath, and dizziness upon standing up or being more active. These symptoms usually come after the more common vaccine side effects, such as fatigue, body aches, and chills, and the myocarditis that is being seen usually occurs within four days of receiving the vaccine. Well, how is myocarditis treated? Thankfully, when caught early, myocarditis is very treatable, usually with rest and NSAIDs such as Advil or ibuprofen. Sometimes the inflammation is severe enough that hospitalization is needed or steroids are used. And in very severe cases, the pumping action of the heart is so compromised that IV medications or mechanical pumps are used to move the blood while the heart is not functioning normally. Thankfully, the myocarditis that has been seen after the vaccine has been mild. So what are my personal thoughts about this? And of course, you need to always consult your own physician and the CDC for guidance, but in the future, we may specifically choose one type of vaccine over another, depending on age and sex. For example, the one-shot Johnson & Johnson vaccine may be a better fit for younger men, while the mRNA vaccines like Pfizer and Moderna may be a better fit for younger women. Also, studies may show that lower doses of the vaccine may be needed in children, or that spacing between the two mRNA vaccines may be increased in order to lessen the potential immune reaction that occurs. Or possibly, we may find that younger people may need only one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine because they have such a robust response to it. At this point, I have given my 13 and 15 year old kids their first dose of the Pfizer COVID vaccine, and I'll wait for more information before giving them their second dose. I have a feeling data may show that younger kids may need only one shot, at least for now. And as I said in my other video about vaccinating kids ages 12 to 15, the risk to these kids from COVID just isn't large enough to pull needed vaccines away from other countries that need the vaccines for a more vulnerable population. Thanks for joining me.